Welcome, friends, to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, it's exciting to be with you again this week. I just always enjoy our time together. It's really special that we have a community of individuals who are nonprofit leaders helping to make a difference in our world. And I'm so excited to be part of that. I'm excited to be here, to be able to help you, to be a resource, to come alongside you and to share with you many of the things that I've done over the years. I've made a lot of mistakes and I've learned from those mistakes and I'm certainly wanting to share with you so that you don't have to do the same things and that your journey isn't as long or as rough as mine was and that uh, maybe we can uh, help you to smooth out some of the bumps in the road that uh, you can get from point A to point B and be able to accomplish your mission in a much easier manner. And so I'm excited to be here to be a resource for you. This Jim and Java show is an important part of that. Uh, I hope if you aren't already a subscriber that you'll want to subscribe to this channel. We'd love to have more of you who are not already subscribing to be part of this community. Uh, also join us out on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. And uh, also our program, Jim and Java, is really fueled by your questions. And if you have questions, you can go out to Twitter and use the hashtag Jim and Java and go to DevFStrats. And also be sure to drop us a comment below or a question in the comment section below. And also, if you've got any questions, you can always email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. So let's dive right into our first question today. I'm excited to get to our question today. Our first question today is from Cynthia in Chicago. And Cynthia asks, have you hosted any in-person dinners recently? If so, how do they seem to be doing? We're getting people still saying they are not comfortable with in-person events. Well, Cynthia, thank you so much for your question. I appreciate that a lot. Well, the answer is I have done my fair share of in-person events. Uh, really, the only season that I didn't do in-person events was spring of 2020. Uh, I was back up doing an event in the fall of 2020 as well. Did a handful of events in 2020 in the fall did uh, pick back up with about half as many dinners as I normally do in spring of 2021 and then did uh, a number of live events in the fall of 2021. It really looks like in the spring of 2022 that uh, we're going to be up quite a bit, almost to the point where we were pre-pandemic for number of dinners. And uh, granted, there are some areas where we still are not able to do dinners, but we're seeing some great live events that are happening. As far as what's happening during the live events, I, I've mentioned numerous times that we went through the cycle in 2020 where people were introduced to a virtual dinner. It became an exciting way to communicate your mission, your vision and your values, and a lot of organizations really relied on the virtual event and it worked for a season. But as we started to move into the fall of 2020, we started to see some signs of erosion, some fatigue in the number of viewers. The viewership started to go down. By spring 2021, the viewership for virtual events had, had more than cut in half and even gone down about 75%. And I found it very interesting because a lot of colleagues out there, a lot of organizations that do meeting planning were really talking about the demise of the in-person li in live dinner or even the demise of banquets and dinners itself. And I'm here to say I don't believe that for one bit. In fact, the pandemic may have even pump new life into dinners and live events. Because there is a point, uh, and we saw this happening with church services as well too, where it was a novelty for a while to, to be virtual. You could go to church on a Sunday morning in your bathrobe, uh, get your cup of coffee and sit on your couch and watch church service. 
But after a while, people started seeing that we're missing that fellowship, that interaction, that live connection with people. We are seeing the exact same thing happen with our dinner strategies. Virtuals were a novelty, They're, they were great, they served an important purpose, but we're starting to see more and more as organizations are venturing out and having live events. The, the overwhelming feedback is from the people who come, we are so glad we came, we didn't realize how much we missed the fellowship, how much we missed the interaction, how much we missed connecting with people. And I really believe the pandemic and the whole virtual could have actually been the transfusion that will pump new life into live events. Now, one of the things that I am seeing is the organizations that are slowly, gradually moving in to a live setting are the ones who seem to be doing the best. Very few organizations are going to be able to wait and survive long enough for 100% of their audience to be excited about coming out. I've described the current process as a bell curve. On You've got opposite ends. You've got one end, you've got individuals who say, COVID was a hoax, I'll, ne I'll never believe it existed. On the other hand, are individuals who say, I won't feel confident and trust going out for a few more years yet. But in the middle are all these individuals who are at least they may be a little cautious, but they're willing to step out and venture out. They want to get back to some sense of normalcy. They want to connect with people. And you providing an event is a great way to do that. Don't be concerned that if you were doing a 300, 400, 500 person event, that your event this year might be 75 or 100 or 125 or 150 people. You need to wade into the water starting at the shallow end and moving to the deep end. It will be years if you want to dive into the deep end. We're, I'm finding that uh, one example was a dinner that I'm doing in New Jersey that they started, they, they really ventured out there in the summer of 2021. Went with a lot of restrictions, but they ventured out in the New Jersey area, had a smaller event. People got excited. People felt, feel comfortable. They built on those people who got excited about the event so that this year in the spring of 2022, they are ready now. They will probably be back to their pre-pandemic numbers and maybe even exceed their pre-pandemic numbers. And so my advice is to venture out. Uh, we have seen organizations that have either continued to do it starting in later 2020 or definitely started again in 2021, getting back to a real strong sense of normalcy here in 2022. And barring some enormous change, a new variant coming in and really setting the tone for the opposite direction, then we, I believe that we're going to start to see less and less restrictions, which mean more organizations will venture out. Uh, one of the biggest phenomenons that I saw, there's two things to be concerned about, two things to be cautious about. Number one is that with two years of backlogged events, 20 and 21, spring of 2022 it has become a logjam for organizations wanting to do events and there being fewer venues with available space on prime nights. And so that is a big challenge that organizations, if you have not by now booked your event for April or early May, you probably are not going to find an available spot on a good night at a good venue. So you may either have to compromise a little bit, potentially move to the fall, and then come back in the spring of 2023 or work through uh, options that way. But some and many organizations took a risk, booked in 2020, uh, 2022 spaces in the spring right now, and they are really the ones who are winning big because as restrictions reduce, more people will come out and they will win, win big. Some that rested, sat on their hands, and were a little overly cautious are really struggling right now to find a spot. So that's, uh, that is really the state 
of those events. And are you going to have people who are going to be cautious about coming out now? Absolutely. Love those people. Respect their decision. Respect who they are and what they're doing. But just know that you will have enough and maybe even many more individuals than not will want to come out for your event. Know that events nowadays are costing more. Hotels and venues are increasing the cost of their meals. And once meals go up, they very rarely go down. So those are things to be concerned about. Venture out there. We've talked in other episodes about should you do a split, uh, live stream, and a live event. Uh, look for those in my other videos. So Cynthia, I hope that helped answer your question. Thanks so much, and I'm glad you're uh, considering pressing forward on this. Well, that completes another broadcast of Jim and Java. Once again, if you liked what you heard, we would love to have you as a subscriber. It's a great community of individuals who really are trying to make a difference in our world and doing so through the raising of friends and funds for the organization. So subscribe, join us out on Instagram for our Wednesday uh, fundraising and film and Thursday tips. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And as I always say, we are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Watch this next video. Take care. Bye-bye.